Hey traders, I don't know about you, but I am so glad 2022 is over. It was one of the most challenging, difficult trading years that I've ever seen in my three decades of trading. But looking forward, that's where we have to go, and that's what we're going to do in this day's session of Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom. I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Is One, were you a consistently successful trader in 2022? Answer that question honestly. I'm going to provide some steps you can take in this video that will help you become more successful in 2023. If it's your first time joining us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, help the algorithm push us out to as many new people as we possibly can because I want to reach a lot of traders, help everyone become a consistently profitable trader in when? 2023 and beyond. So let's jump into today's session right now. Hey folks, good day. I had an absolutely fantastic discussion with a very good friend of mine, uh, Mike Lamont. Some of you may know him. Uh, he runs Mara, Mara Wealth. We were chatting, had a really long discussion, but he asked a question that each one of us needs to take into consideration going from 2022 into 2023. The question Mike asked um, as we were chatting, this is one of the things that he asked the people who uh, su su subscribe to his services. He goes, what are your goals for 2023 based on what you've learned in 2022? And they added this caveat to it that I went, wow. Are your beliefs getting you to your goals? Are your beliefs getting you to your goals? Because one thing with trading, trading has a lot to do with what you believe. I'm assuming that everybody is trading a really good system that is that has an edge. But if you're not achieving or if you're not performing up to your edge, there's some really hard questions we need to be asking ourselves as we move into 2023. And this weekend gives us the wonderful opportunity to do exactly that. So, uh, with no further ado, let's jump into today's session. I'm Dennis Wilburn, the autopilot trader. Anil Parikh is joining us from uh, Delaware. Uh, Anil, welcome. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. And if we hear any banging in the background, we know it's the furnace guy coming to fix your furnace. All right. If he calls me, I may have to leave. Otherwise, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, and just a reminder that uh, the disclaimer remains in place that we've had all year long. I want to welcome everybody. And take a look at where are you at? As you can see, looking at my PL. Now, this does not include everything. Uh, I've got a couple of positions that are open that uh, will close out, but it's looking like I'm going to finish up somewhere between 30 to 37 percent for the year. I'm very pleased with that, but at the same time, I'm kind of dissatisfied with that because I think I could have done better. It was a challenging market for almost everybody in the market. My my buddy told me that, uh, uh, Anil, he told me that uh, he basically, and these guys are really good trader. He, he basically is finishing the year flat for the year. And so when the market is, here's where we were last week, as you can see, a lot of red there with the indexes. Well, here's where we are this week. And, and as you can see, the NASDAQ's down 35% from its high from 2021. The uh, S&P, three of the indexes are in bear market territory. And so it, uh, you know, how many, uh, who else has been, you know, going through the pain of, of, of basically a, an extremely choppy and bloody market? Somebody made a comment about blood in the street. Anybody else, you know, kind of suffering through the same kind of thing? Anil? We had a challenge i think and uh, personally my biggest challenge was to take action at the time of my signals mm, mm. i kind of waited for more confirmation and this market was moving so quickly that uh, waiting for con confirmation hurt me yeah you know that's kind of that's an interesting that you bring up that waiting <clears throat> uh, for confirmation, you can see this book in the little. Uh, I for whatever reason I got out. Mark Douglas is trading in the zone this morning. I was looking for some 
uh, conceptual things. And oh my goodness gracious, if you have not read this book by Mark Douglas, I encourage you get the Kindle edition or whatever. Read it this weekend. Read it this weekend, and it'll set your path, set your foot on the path of more success going into 2023. Uh, Anil, have you read this book? I know, right? Yeah, I read that one. And also there's another book by him, uh, Disciplined Trader. That's also equally good. Yes. And uh, that has a workbook. Both of them have workbooks with them. And so, I, like I said, I will put a link down in the uh, description on the uh, uh, YouTube channel so you can take a look at that. Uh, we're wishing you a very Merry Christmas. And we want to thank you for being over on the YouTube channel. As I said, I'm... You know, as of oh, about nine o'clock this morning, here's where I'm sitting. I don't like I said, I don't know if I will finish off at the, that amount, but definitely, you know, have done a great job of topping the S&P. This makes the 11th year that we've topped the S&P by double digits. So I'm really pleased. We have people reporting back. David says chop uh, over the last few months in November, the chop. Uh, and so it is absolutely crucial, uh, as I was talking about Mark Douglas's book, and Neil, uh, to remember that in one of the things he says is that trade a mechanical system and make sure you take all the trades that your signal, you know, that your signals, uh, uh, when your system provides a signal and take them on time. Because if you miss the window of opportunity, it, the results can be kind of ugly. So if you miss a, especially in this kind of market, if you miss your window of opportunity by a couple of days, that that is way too late. Uh, you know, you want to take your 10% profit and get the heck out of Dodge as quickly as possible. Hey, Mike Norton, how are you doing, buddy? Steve, nice to see you. Barry? And so let's go ahead and take a look at the indexes and see what the heck may be going on. Now, um, as we as we move through, <clears throat> and as I covered in the uh, uh, opening intro, which is part of the video that you guys don't see until you watch the actual recording, is I'm going to be covering three clues for higher probability trading going into next into next year. And some things you can do right now. We've had a lot of tradable rallies, but no sustained rallies. So let's take a look at the indexes. That's what we're here for. I'm going to go ahead and throw up on the indexes. I'm going to throw, <laughs> that sounds, yeah, the indexes are worth throwing up on this year, right? <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Uh, what do I see in these, in the markets? Uh, what I, one of the things I see is, okay. We are either this whole two weeks period right here, that's a level of indecision. We've had a lot of ups and downs and, and fairly significant moves back up to the upside. But a couple of things to be looking at. On the week, on the daily charts, we're below the 200 day moving average, we're below the 50 day moving average, and right now we're below the 50 day, eight day moving average. We are, and so one of the other type of patterns this could be shaping up to be is a downside flag with this being the initial part of the flag pull. And then here's the flag, breaks out the bottom of this. Where's it going? Probably down to here. That's your bottom target on the flag, which is a, with, a, with a, a drop all the way back down to the bottom of the Fibonacci there. Couple of things to look at longer term, which may, what I'm looking, again, this is a forecast for what may happen in 2023. I'm looking for a, you know, some strong downside moves in, in 2023, but at some point, a bounce that will be a very healthy bounce. Uh, and so, we could see the biggest sell-off that we've seen in many, many years in the market, followed by a significant upside rally that we want to, you know, that we want to participate in. As we move towards the end of 2023, the, the indexes and markets will probably be start getting ready for the 2024 election, 
which that could pump, uh, uh, you know, depending on what the circumstances or the environmental is like at that time, could provide some some additional rally uh, information rallies in going into that. So let's keep our eye on that level right there. That if it breaks out down there, because it's a, this flag to the downside, measuring down that puts us down at. This uh, below 352. Longer term, what the heck's happening over here on the um, the monthly chart? Because this is the last day of the month. I'm going to get rid of the fib here for a second. I can draw that back in later. But again, this is a very bearish. Uh, you could consider, you know, it is a bearish engulfing, not reversing much of an uptrend, but a monthly bearish engulfing that is just about ready to drop back down below some significant moving averages, which I could see this failing all the way down here to the 252 level that we have identified earlier, but also take this high right here of approximately 340. That could be your downside target for the uh, S and P are the spiders in this case over the next two to three months. Two to three months. Is there anything you see on the horizon that's that's telling you, hey, I want to be a buyer right now? Uh, Anil, is there anything you see on the horizon to say, hey, buy me and, and and let's get along this market? No, I don't. Right. <laughs> okay. And so and so when it's like that, and we're going to be covering that. You know, in our in our clues for for higher probability trades, a couple of things to be looking at is again, everything is below its moving averages. I mean, this is really ugly. The on the longer term, the MACD. This is the monthly still heading down. Matter of fact, we had a reversal. It had started a reverse here two months ago in October, as you can see here by the darker red lines. But then what happened this month? Again, the, the MACD continues to point down. No sign that the uh, indexes want to turn around. The longer term momentum is still pointing which way? Down uh, on these monthly charts. So again, so when the monthly, when the momentum is pointing down and the uh and the uh, uh the price action is pointing down. What should we be looking at doing? Probably not, not. We should probably be waiting for downside trades. So back to what's going on with IWM, similar type situation on the weekly chart. Yeah, we're getting a little bounce, a bit of a, 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 a some candles here, uh, some long tailed candles, hammer week before last. Dragonfly Doji or to a hammer this week, slightly undercut the low from last week, and it's just hanging out. So again, indecision at this level here. If we drop from here, we're probably going to go down here and retest the past lows or even go lower, even go lower, which is um, one of those situations where we're just looking to see. There is strong levels of support down there at the 163 level. But again, just taking a look at the, the charts, this is looking ugly. I mean, let, let's, let's just call it call it what it is and you know, not try to lie to ourselves because uh, that's one of the things that Mark Douglas talks about in his book is he's talking about how, how our eyes will lie to us uh, because of the bias we have towards trading to the upside. So, Anil, that's what I have for the indexes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I mean, it's kind of like I'm stuck in the middle. Uh, I'm looking for a bounce and a trade back up. But if it bounces here and goes back up, that could be very bullish uh, because this would be a higher low. And if we take out this high right there, that would put us back into an uptrend. Weekly S&P after it advances of 2022, note the prior uh, three downtrends prior in, in the prior year, if they repeat today's downtrend could break below. Yeah, without an without a doubt, Barry, uh, agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, 
because we could do a projection down, and I'll just throw you out, show you how to do that projection to the downside right here, is if we take out from that last, oh, poo, hold on a second, let me, <laughs> let me do it the right way. So I've got from that downtrend right there, do that low right there, back up to the high right there. And that gives me a downside target, 100%. Symmetric move down to about 149. 149. Excellent. So, any questions out there over on the YouTube channel? Any questions there? I think the question I have is what do you think will have to change in the outside world or whatever that's going to make this thing turn around? Oh, you know, that, that, I, I, that's a great question, Neil, and and I'll throw that open to the to the folks that are on the session. You know, what do you think has to change? What do you think? You know, it, 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 are we? Um, it, is it the inflationary issues that are driving this? Is it the? Uh, uh, do we have to do uh, monetary easing to get us back out of this situation, uh, or is it just the? What's happening is because of what's happened in the past. I mean, uh, uh, and it's just a reflection of we're finally have to, you know, our chickens are coming home to roost and we're going to have to bite the bullet and see what transpires from there. Uh, what's going to turn, what's going to turn it around? Uh, I think that's one of the things the Fed is having a really struggling time. Yeah. Uh, Nicole says the Fed needs to pause and earnings to come in somewhat steady. And I think that right now there's just a, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. There's just a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, the, and without going political, um, I think there's forces, I think there are forces out there that are in reality wanting to see the United States taken down. And I think that they're going to keep pumping, uh, you know, pumping, you know, people into the system, pumping, uh, uh, just uh, challenging the U.S., trying to weaken us both financially and and militarily, and this type of thing. And uh, and so the uh, right now that's a constant tension. I think that is on the country as a whole. <laughs> your tinfoil hat <laughs> ah, thank you david appreciate that anyway now i'm i'm just you know i'm calling it the way it is i mean anybody thinks that what's going on is normal is probably not normal <laughs> and uh anyway so that's where i'm standing on that so neil i'm sorry for the long verbose answer to that but that's kind of where i'm i'm at I don't know what's going to turn around. And so that's one another reason why we want to just trade the charts that are in front of us and um, take our profits where we can and protect ourselves to the downside. I but I, I but agree with uh, Nicole's comment on Fed. I think when Fed will pause and maybe turn around, that may be yeah. the pain we need to go through. But I wonder if it's just, yeah, that would be just a, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like I'm uh, almost on anything that is suggested, I'm sitting there looking at it, it, it would be a, a, a kind of a temporary, a temporary fix. I, I, I'm not sure we're down into a pain level enough yet to basically provide a, a swing back up to the upside. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Again, those are where, you know, the the uh, the predictions or the prophetic, you know, word on about things like that is just, you know, it, it's just an opinion, an opinion of uh, of what may happen, and everybody everybody has one there. So, one thing I can tell you about though is here's an opinion on a stock that I'm looking at. Now, Anil, you indicated you weren't didn't have a stock for us this week, but I'm just going to throw out one for consideration. 
and it is our buddy Netflix. Netflix is uh, a couple of things that Netflix is doing. One, it has put in a bottom here and it's working its way back up. This is a very healthy looking uh, pattern in that we came off the bottom here, worked back up to the moving averages, pulled back, worked back up, broke out of, you know, higher low, broke out of the higher high. And now we're doing a nice little pullback into the moving averages and this down uptrend line. Now we're going to break out above this level and continue going higher. We shall see. With the current market conditions, I would look at trading, uh, trading Netflix at two different places. One, we've got earnings coming up here. And so if you want to do the earnings trade, which is coming up on the 19th after the market close after the market closes you can it needs to break back above i think it needs to break back above the 20 day moving average you can draw in a trend line right here and if we break above that trend line that could give us an opportunity to get in however it's going to be really close to the resistance caused by the moving averages of the 20 day moving average. The other place is put an alert down here about the 276 level where it got down to the low of 273 this week. If it gets back in here, that may be an area where we wanna bounce or where we could put in an order uh, once we did rebound off of that level. It looked like it was going into the pre-earnings run last week. We actually did a trade on this and it washed out. But now it's it's back into providing us a potential uptrend. Uh, longer term, looking at the monthly charts, this is looking pretty healthy over here. Hasn't quite broken out yet, but pay attention to that. So that's what I've got for. What do you think about Netflix, Anil? Yeah, Netflix is uh, number one rated stock by Mark Shaken. Okay. For 2023. Okay. And so well, let's go on over and uh, spend some time with just you know, asking some questions. Uh, again, take this weekend and questions to be asking going into 2023 as well. What? What went great in 2022? Now, each one of us needs to answer those questions for ourselves. What did you learn? And, and Anil, I promise you I would ask you those questions. What went great for you in 2022 and what did you learn? What I learned, I think I already kind of inferred on it, is the I had very clear signals, on, particularly on the weekly chart. Right. It, it, it was almost uncanny. and. Uh, the mistakes I made was I waited for additional confirmation. It was moving too fast. Mm, mm. And if I had not done that, I, I could have done much better. Okay. <clears throat> and so, and then the other questions to ask ourselves, and Mark Douglas talks about this a lot. Was I a consistently successful trader? Now, this question can, you know, to be really honest with yourself, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, was I a consistently successful trader? It's gonna either be yes or no. Um, and if I wasn't, how am I going to improve and what new habits am I going to start so I can become a consistently successful trader? Uh, there's, a, there's an adage out there that talks about Rather than trying to, you know, as we get moving into the new year, and a lot of people do the the uh, new year resolutions and all that kind of stuff, I don't so much uh, do new year's resolutions, but I definitely set goals come for the for the uh, coming year. And uh, the question I asked to ask myself is is okay. Rather than thinking about what bad habits do I need to stop or get rid of, uh, psychologically. A better way to approach it is what new habits can I start that will replace my old habits that are unhealthy or 
my my other behavior that I'm looking at. Um, Around twelve, wow, that's a good one. Uh, and so the answer, you know, answer these in your journal. Commit to starting one new habit every month, and then after ninety days, review the progress and adjust. Commit to an action plan uh, to become a wise, profitable trader in two thousand twenty-three. And then my, the three secrets that I promised you is one: trade with a long-term trend. In other words, we've taken a look at the indexes today, uh, and we see that the indexes are in a longer-term downtrend. So, and re so, I think one of the things that traders oftentimes do, to keep this really brief, is we fool ourselves into thinking that, or, or we we're attracted to try to pick the bottom, consciously or subconsciously, whatever. We think we have to pick the bottom. And that costs us, I think, a lot of pain and agony and money because rather than waiting for the trend to change and then trading with the trend, we set ourselves up to be nickeled and dimed and, and sometimes dollared and, and or more to the downside. Two is let price action location, you know, check in price action location compared to the app moving averages. In other words, if price action is sitting below the 200, below the uh, 50, below the um, uh, eight day moving average, it's telling you, don't trade it to the upside. Don't trade it to the upside. And if price actions are above that, it gets back to the adage of, if I'm in an uptrend, I wanna trade pullbacks. If I'm in a downtrend, I want to trade pull-ups to the downside. That's where you take your profits and our starch position. And then momentum direction on multiple time frames, as we saw today, taking a look at the momentum on the monthly chart or the weekly chart. If it's still pointing down, that is a strong uh, head, not, not headwind, but uh, yeah, strong headwind that you're sailing into that will impact your ability to take profits appropriately. So that's those are the three areas that if you focus and just take a look at those, answer some hard questions regarding them, they can increase your probability of finding or increase uh, your uh, the chance that you're going to find high power probability trades because you're in the you're going with the flow rather than fighting the flow. So and Neil, that's basically all I've got for today. Um, thanks for your comments on the uh, uh, journal. I will suggest, as I've said, journaling. Traders who learn how to journal typically turn up, you know, will wind up being better traders in the long run. So here's two journals. I'll put the link in the in the uh, uh, description on uh, the uh YouTube channel and also in the description when I send out the notifications for the, but this is a great journal. Uh, it's a top seller on Amazon and continues to be so. So I'm very proud that my son put this sucker together. <laughs> so Anil, do you have any last and final thoughts or comments? I got a question that I'm struggling with. Uh, is yes, sir. How, how do you define consistency? Do you define it with betting average? Or, or your profits, or what's that? that you think about it? That is a great question. I think that part of the, I think the initial part of consistency has to be defined as one: trade a mechanical system, trade a mechanical system with a proven edge, and then consistency is: am I consistently applying the rules? And to you, to, you know, let me use you, what you had shared with us earlier as an example. You were saying you were getting your triggers to get into a trade, but it, then delaying in getting into the position for whatever reason, because you're waiting for additional confirmation. Well, that would mean from a, from a system standpoint, you were inconsistent in applying your rules. So the consistency has to come initially from how you apply your rules uh, uh, to rules to the system, and you know uh, the uh, you know are you taking every trade 
when you get a trigger. Uh, if not, you're being inconsistent in applying how you trade your, uh, trade your system. So I'm not looking at profits. I am not looking at whether the trade is successful or not S successful from the, because we tend to define successful trades as the ones that make money for us. But there are so successful trades where you hit your stop loss. But that could be still a excellent, consistent trade if the if you're within the, the the parameters of your system and so you know are you are you 90 percent within their parameters 80 percent 50 percent so that's how i i define consistency um that's good Some... and, and i know that part of the things that can work against us with with consistency let's say that you have a rule you know i have a rule that i want to be trading during the last hour of the day or at least evaluating uh um uh, you know for potential trades during the last hour of the day and then put in the orders at the end of the day or after hours if i'm not doing that let's say i get get wrapped up in the the you know overcharged emotions of of the market that it tends to do to you and i start trading in during the earlier part of the day i'm being inconsistent in the inconsistent in the application of my system because my system is designed to trade the final hour of the day so great question thank you very much anybody else Okay, anybody uh, over on uh, the YouTube channel? Anything, any questions over there? Okay. Well, with that, I want to say one, thank you all for, for joining us. And please, uh, you know, just let other people know what we're going to be doing or what we're doing with um, the, uh, uh, what we're, I'm going to put together, you know, Steve, that's a great question. Do I have a mentor program? I am in the process of developing one. And hopefully we'll be able to launch that out first part of next year. That's what I'm working on doing because I want to do that with the release of my book. So aloha, trade well, prosper, mahalo, God bless everybody. Happy New Year, as we say over here in Hawaii. Haole makahiki ho. And uh, Anil, I'm glad you're warm. I'm glad your furnace is being fixed. I'm looking forward to getting with you about neuro-linguistic programming and neuro-associative conditioning. There you go, uh, going into next year. So again, folks, hang in there and uh, spend some time on developing yourself and developing your pro your system and program going forward uh, this weekend. Because what you do about over this weekend or trading in 2023 will go a long ways at defining either your success or failure in 2023. So aloha, and we'll talk to you guys next week. See ya.